Hey guys, I'm creating this video to teach you how to make your virtual classroom using an actual photo of yourself. This is going to be a pretty uh, beginner's type of tutorial. So if you're familiar with Google Slides, you might be able to breeze through this and catch on pretty quickly. So let's get started. You'll have to start on Google and go to your waffle and go to slides. You'll click on a blank presentation to start a new one. And the first thing we got to do is have a background. So we'll click on background, choose image, and we will do a Google image search. We'll just type in wall and floor and hit enter. And you can look through them um, for this. I'm just going to quickly click on that one and hit insert, done. When you see the four white arrows, that means you can click on an item and just hit backspace on your keyboard to erase it. We are ready to start inserting items so that it can start look it can start looking like a classroom. So we're gonna go to insert, image, search the web, or there's a shortcut which is here, and you just search the web. We'll search the web on the right. This is the key to making it look like like real life. You'll do transparent and let's do a blackboard. You could do a whiteboard, whatever you're looking for. The word transparent in front of whatever you're looking for just ensures that there's nothing weird border or background behind the blackboard, that it is just the picture of the blackboard so that it looks more real. Okay, so I'm gonna search the web for more things. I want a transparent rug now. And I know what rug I'm looking for. Oh, there it is. Insert. And there it goes. So I'm doing a zebra print. I'm gonna hit image, search the web again, and I want a transparent plant. I'll click on that one, insert. Here, I'll add one more thing. Search the web shelf. Now you can put bookshelf, but I'm putting shelf because I want the shelf to be empty. Because just like on my original one that I posted on my um, social media accounts, let me show you. I add in items that I want. So that you know it might change weekly or monthly however you'd like with the things in here that your students will be able to click on this is where um, I have a suggestion so if you know that your classroom is always going to have the rug the plant the blackboard and the bookshelf and everything else might change weekly or monthly or however you do it I suggest saving this background so that you don't have to do this process every single time so the way you do that is file download and you want to download it to a JPEG image this current slide that I'm on so you'll save it and it'll download right here and you'll click save as and I made one like it earlier so I'm just gonna put background class demo you'll save it So now this is what I mean. When you create a presentation later and you'll have a, a, a white blank background, you'll go to background, choose image, upload, browse your computer for that and here is the one that I saved. So you won't have to do the first steps you know, every single time. You will have your background already your classroom set up and the things that might change are the things that go in your bookshelf or the texting inside of the blackboard. Um, I'm going to add one more thing which I should have probably done before I saved my background but I want to show you what happens if you don't choose a transparent image. I'm just going to click chandelier and I'm going to click on this image here and insert it. So if you notice it looks like it's in a different room instead of it being in this room that we just created. So that's why you want transparent. So I'm going to go here, search the web, tr 
transparent chandelier. And I'm going to click on that one. Insert. So notice now it is just the chandelier. Okay, you might you might want a light fixture, um, a lamp, a tall lamp, whatever you want. You can design this and personalize it however you'd like. I do have to add that I belong to a Facebook group called Bitmoji Craze for Educators, and in that group, um, they give out a lot of resources. It's just a bunch of teachers and educators that are willing to help each other out for free. It is the most awesome page. Um, and I think it's amazing because one of my teacher besties actually sent me a file that she found on there. I couldn't find it. So she sent it to me and um, it's pretty much a file that someone created on that Facebook group that someone created on that Facebook group page of images that already have um, a transparent item. So there's no background to them. So you could just look through the through all of this and decide what items you'd like to add to your classroom. So I'm just gonna randomly add like a welcome banner. And all you have to do is click on the item, make sure it's there's a blue square, you right click, copy, and you go back to your own presentation, right click, paste. And you can put it anywhere you like. I'm gonna make this much smaller. I'm going to put it here beneath my blackboard, okay? If you notice on mine, I have a place value chart on the top border of my virtual classroom. I did not find that from anywhere. I could not find it anywhere, not on Google, not one that I could actually make work here at least, and not through this file. So what I ended up doing is creating my own, and I'm gonna show you. You could either go to shapes or you can go to insert, shape, shapes here and you can pick any shape you want so I'm just gonna go with the rectangle click and drag as big as you want it I'm gonna make it small and this rectangle appears I'm gonna double click inside and write billions make that a little bit bigger so it's all in one now notice here is like a paint bucket so it's to fill it in I want it to be yellow here it says border color, so the border of my rectangle, black, and then all these different thicknesses, I'm gonna put two. So now it's a little, the border is a little thicker. If you wanted to change the text size or color, you could just highlight. Here's the fonts. Here um, is the size, and then for the text color, you could click here and select the color you want. I'm gonna just leave it for black. Now, another thing, if you wanted to make a chart like I did, um, instead of going to shape and doing this all over again, you already made the size that you like. So click on it, you can do right click copy, right click paste. Or you could also make sure it's highlighted blue, control C, control V, those are the shortcuts. So now you have the exact same size, exactly how you want. And all you have to do is edit the inside text. So 100 millions. And so I need to highlight all of it to make it smaller. And this one will be 10 millions. Remember you need to highlight the text to make it smaller and you want to I'm going to change the color of this cuz they're in different periods there now let's say I don't like where it is and I want to move I want to move it a little bit higher well now I have to do a one by one so what's awesome is you can actually hold down the control button do not let go and click on all of them while you're holding down the control button so that now they're all highlighted. You can right click and group them. When you group them, what that does is it makes them all one group. So now when you move it, they move together. So that's really cool for if you want to create, you know, a shape here, the way I made my my little, uh, some of mine to appear like books. I made a rectangle like this. 
and then typed inside. If you accidentally move the bookshelf, for example, when you wanted to really move the rug, all you have to do is press undo and it will go back to how you had everything. I'm going to choose another item from this resource that the wonderful teacher shared and I'm going to add, let's say, a, a seating area. So I'll do like a bean bag. So I will just remember right click, copy, or you can use the shortcuts, control C, control V. And I'm going to control V here. Okay. Notice how I still have this highlighted. You can right click, format options. You can recolor. Let's say the color doesn't work for you. That's cool. There's many different things you can do to each item if you right click and you go to format options. I think I even learned how to rotate. So flip. So it flips it that way. See this little circle here? You could also flip it that way. Um, you know, use that circle to, to help you make it diagonal, whatever you'd like. Um, I'm going to rotate it and just flip it horizontal because I want it facing the other way. All right, so from here, I want to go ahead and show you how to select and put an image of yourself on here. What I did is on my cell phone, I found a picture that I liked of myself and I emailed it to myself here. That's a lot of myself that I wanted, that I liked. So this is the picture. All I have to do is right click copy and what you do is you go to remove dot bg stands for background and you can either just control v or control uh, right click paste or if you have a picture already saved you can upload it from your files so I'm just gonna I didn't save it so I'm just going to control v And there it is. All you, you don't even have to save it at this point. You just right click, copy image, go here, and you right click, paste. There I am. So if you notice now, I am in front of the bean bag. Another thing that I wanted to show you is you just right click, order. Oh, it's already in the front. No, let's say I want my bean bag in the front. So I need to make sure sometimes I have to move it around. Right click, order, bring to front. So now, if you notice, I'll be behind the bean bag. Or, you know, that way. That's however you want. If you want to put the bean bag in front of you or you want to put the bean bag, order, send backward. Now I'm on top of the bean bags. If I go here, um, I can add on basically anything. This lady really provided so many things to add on. She even created backgrounds and put them on here. Well, she found backgrounds and put them on here to share so that it could be easy and ready for you just to copy and paste. What I really love about the remove background is you can Google search anything you're looking for if you're not satisfied with whatever you find in the image search, image search here or in the resource page. You can Google search anything and just copy paste it here and it will remove the background. That's what I did for my flexible seating. On this resource page, I did not find what I was looking for. I actually have these in my classroom, so I kind of wanted to mimic a little bit of my classroom with the flexible seating. So I went to do a Google image search on my own outside of the Google Slides, and I found them, and I just copied and pasted it here. So you can imagine like how much you can do with that. Oh, and then one last thing. For this page right here, so the lady made it public and was and they said that we are more than welcome to share it. So what I did is I made a copy of this and I shared it to my Google Drive and made it public. So copy this, um, what I'm going to do is copy this link and put it onto the video, the video description of this video so that all you have to do is 
copy and paste that link onto a new tab and it's gonna take you directly to this because I made it public and anybody with this link can enter it. I will try and see if I can add my um, place value chart so that all you have to do is copy and paste it. But my next video will probably consist of how to um, make whatever items in your bookshelf or whatever you have, how to make it interactive, how to make it go to a link. Maybe you want this to be a specific link to an audiobook or a video or brain pop. So my next video will teach you how to do that. Right now, just focus on, um, you know, making your classroom all cutesy and yeah, playing around with it. If there's any questions you have, feel free to um, send me a message, write it on here. I'll try my best to text, uh, to write back. And, you know, I just wanted to share the wealth. There's many resources out there. We know, we as educators know that, you know, we work best when we all share. And um, I'm always here and willing to answer any questions that you have. Or if you have any suggestions for me, I'm still learning how to do this stuff. And, you know, I'll just be sharing as I go if you guys uh, continue to be interested. Please let me know. Thank you for any feedback and yeah, talk to y'all soon. Bye.